Good morning and welcome. I had an amazing contest this morning. I wanted to show it to you. It was round 884 by Duality. He had some amazing problems. Absolutely brilliant. Went for a nice run this morning. Solid 2.7 miles or so. So it should be ready to go. Uh, here we go. Let's begin. All right, subtraction game. Two positive integers A and B. For some integer N, the two players will play a game starting with a pile of N stones. They remove A or B stones from the pile, unable to make the move lose. Find a positive integer N such that the second player to move in this game has a winning strategy. So no matter what move the first player wins, the second player. So just the sum of the two numbers. I know YouTube has the attention span of a hummingbird with ADHD, so let me be your subway surfer while I code. Five minutes before the contest started, at 7.30 a.m., I sent a message to my team at work saying I might be five minutes late to our meeting because this contest goes until 10.35. I didn't say what I was doing, but my manager, who also does code forces, knew exactly where I would be. He made this joke about it. Now, remember this for the end because it is hilarious. Primality of an array is defined as the number of pairs such that the two numbers are between one and n and the max is prime. Interesting. Find any permutation with the maximum possible primalities you could format. I like it. We want as many pairs as possible to be prime. So let's think. It's oh, so it must contain one. Um, two is optional. My instinct says put one in the middle, two in the left, three in the right. I have no idea how to prove it though. Um, so oh, the only one that doesn't work is this. Everything else will work. It contains one. Running answer test one. Oh. Two. Submit to B. Thank you for catching that in pretests. Judge my code, judge my code, judge my code, judge my code. Dang, alright. Oh, three's wrong. Okay, that's certainly right. Nice. You never combine three adjacent things. No. If you take something, you can't take the next one, right? It's always true, yeah but you can take every other maximally. You don't have to, you can delete two in a row. Can you delete two in a row? You can always delete a prefix. You can always delete a suffix. And then you can keep the evens or the odds. Right? That's a cool problem, really cool. Super, super nice. How does it take me 17 minutes to get through these problems? I'm just so slow today. Throw major. <laughs> This is funny. I really like this set. I'm not doing well, but the authors... How am I doing, actually? Yeah, I'm doing pretty bad. But the authors are, uh, funny. Well, we just need to try all row major orders, right? So all factors. This looks like a string problem. It's really a number problem. It's a, it's a math problem. It's a good problem, though. It's very interesting. I've never seen anything like it before. Oh, what if you don't have a factor of three? That means every third thing? will be different. So none of these numbers are factors of 3. If you don't have a factor of 3, then you do every 3. For 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, that's brilliant. That's so smart. Oh my goodness, what a problem. Wow. That is one of the coolest problems I've seen in a really long time. I also feel like a genius having solved it. Okay. Determine whether a great grid, there exists a great grid. Oh, but you don't have to make it. This feels very too saddy. Yeah, let me think about this instead based on the cells in the middle. Also a good problem. How do people think of this? What's an example where it's impossible? I mean, sure. Okay, do you have a real example where it's impossible? There are constraints I have not internalized. That is the worst. That means I am far away from the solution. What? Wait a minute. The genius here, downright. Whoa, how did anybody figure this out? Incredible. It is incredible. <laughs> How did they figure it out? How did they figure it out? Okay, so what is this fourth case now? Where did they go? Nice. Okay. So 
where the rest of the contest is going on this problem that I don't want to solve. Alright, best part of the day? It's got a paper cup. Guys, I'm, uh, I'm going to become a professional baseball pitcher, MLB. Throw in paper balls. 105 miles an hour. I'm telling you. Alright, mid cost permutation. Well, I'm not getting that back. <laughs> I actually had some notes on this, which I've just thrown away. But it was fun. And we're not doing this to become the best programmer in the world. We're doing this to have fun. So it was worth it. Okay. Yeah, we need a brute forcer. This is too hard to think about. Really? <laughs> You're telling me it doesn't matter? Well, I guess we could maybe get some points for it, huh? How fast is, is there a place falling? It's not. What the heck? Oh, interesting. It's sorted. That's odd. Why? So you're really telling me with a straight face that this is positive? It's zero or positive? Then we sort? And what if it's negative? I'm like solving the problem over here, but I haven't learned anything to have zero IQ in a keyboard. Yeah, so interesting. So if it's negative one, we always sort in decreasing order. This is actually maybe doable. I could if I just like get lucky enough. Maybe there's a solution to F2. Wait, hang on, is F is F1 just way easier here? I'll take points. You're offering me points? I'll take points. Um do I need intelligence to get the points? Because I don't have any of that. As long as it's just points for free, I will take the points. We're a factor of n slow, aren't we? Oh, I got excited about my points. Darn. What sort of data structure do we need to solve this problem? These are all positive. Ooh, they're all positive. Woohoo! At this point in the contest, I was getting pretty worried because not only did I not really have a good solution, but this is the first time I had passed samples. There are about eight minutes left, and this solution is 100% guesswork based on my brute forcer. There is no intelligence here. It is all just pattern finding. But I finally got it to a point where it's passing samples, and it even passed one of my own test cases, which I thought was decent. So I submit it, and here's that submit. Please work, 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 please work. Oh, don't time limit. Oh, are you gonna run time error? I was pretty surprised by this verdict because runtime error is like one of the most predictable things to do if you're good and you just don't really get runtime error very often. So when I got runtime error, I thought about what could possibly be causing it. My immediate instinct was this throw null statement that I had. This was me just verifying that my complicated calculations all kind of made sense. So I figured I had a math issue somewhere or maybe something was overflowing and the problem was like that I was just miscalculating it. And if that were the case, there's honestly no way of solving the problem. I was just too far away from the solution to be able to figure it out. Thankfully, the issue wasn't actually this. So when I submitted this, I still got runtime error, which means that wasn't the thing causing the runtime error. But this made me even more confused because if it wasn't that, what on earth could it be? How is it a runtime error? How do I possibly crash? What could be crashing? Sort? At this point, I go full crazy mode. This is a really rare strat, but it's kind of fun to use. I know this is my last chance of getting the problem right. If I don't get the problem, whatever, it doesn't matter. And if I do get the problem, all that really matters is whether I got it in time or not. It doesn't matter how many wrong answers I have. So what I do is I actually add infinite loops to my code intentionally here so that I can see whether my code gets runtime error or time limit exceeded from the well true loops. So if I know where it's crashing, then I can figure out what's causing the crash and maybe it'll help me debug it faster. That's, that's what I'm trying. Uh, but it's a really risky play. And most of the time, adding these loops is a bad idea because it's just going to cost you the points you otherwise would have gotten when you end up solving the problem. 
and it's better to just debug your code yourself. But honestly, at this point, I don't care. I just don't have time. So right here, I get so lucky. I finally get a TLE with one minute left in a three hour contest. This is literally my last chance to fix something. And I just got a clue as to where it might be going wrong. Oh, that's one. I have like 30 seconds left. I'm just laser focused. My fingers are shivering. My heart rate just overflowed integer max value. And all I'm trying to do is make sure I have all of the right code. I look at it for a sec. I don't even test samples because if it's wrong, I don't have time to fix it and resubmit. And I just yeet it onto code forces while my TLE is still running. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. No. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> oh my goodness, I am the greatest programmer in the world. <laughs> oh man. Oh my goodness. I... I'm gonna be late for I'm late for a meeting. I'm five minutes late for a meeting. But when I tell them about this, they will understand, okay? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I alright, here's what was going through my head. I was so sure that this would always handle the n equals one case. But it doesn't. Oh man. Alright, how do I do? That was clutch to beat Omnic. Let's go! <laughs> Alright, I gotta go to my meeting. But that was the most fun I've had in a really long time.